In this video, we are going to discuss how to make an animation in MATLAB, and we'll do two examples here. The first one is just a projectile, okay? And so basically is what we're gonna be expecting is we're gonna animate some sort of projectile making a parabolic path. Yeah. So I have our acceleration of gravity here, which we'll need in one of our equations, the initial velocity, and the angle theta that it's thrown from the horizontal. And then lastly, the initial height in meters. So this would be um, really an example of something being thrown from two meters high that makes an angle of 30 degrees with the um, horizontal with an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. And then of course, we're gonna be on earth for this example. So the acceleration of gravity is the 9.81 meters per second squared. And so is what I've done from here is I have developed our vertical displacement function and horizontal displacement. And so is what we want to do is graph this um, at kind of each point in time. So when t equals zero, when maybe t equals 0.1, t equals 0.2, and we're going to compile all those graphs together to make an animation. So the, the first thing I want to note here is in this example, I'm going to use 24 frames per second. Um, you can adjust this, the, the number of frames per second as you choose. Uh, 24 frames per second is kind of a common number of frames per second because the human eye can't distinguish that these are separate frames when it's going, when we have this many frames per second. Okay, so <clears throat> next we, we need to know how many frames we're going to make. So it might be helpful to know how long is this ball going to be in the air for? So in other words, we kind of want to know, you know, when's it going to hit the ground? Well, we can figure that out probably pretty quickly here if we maybe just do a little graph of the vertical displacement. And so if we do that, we have F plot. We have the function is named dy i believe yes dy and we don't know quite when this hits the ground so why don't we just try zero to five okay and if we don't see that it hits the ground yet we'll adjust the domain here a little bit so let's go ahead and hit run okay and we can see the graph um it looks like it actually um hits the ground somewhere around here four point something and if we want to find that value with a little bit more accuracy, one thing we could do is um, we could find when the ball hits the ground. That would be when our vertical displacement is zero. Okay. So is what we could do is we could use F0, the built-in function F0. We'll type in the... Um, function that we're trying to find the zero of four. And then we just saw that it's close to four. So why don't we just say four? And let's see. Um, maybe call it TG for T ground when we hit the ground. Let's see what we get when we do this. And if we want to, we can comment this plot out here. We're not going to need it anymore. Let's go ahead and hit run. <clears throat> and so we can see it takes about 4.7151 seconds. Yeah. So if we want to go at 24 frames per second, okay, 24 frames per second, well, we need uh, to do that for 4.1751 seconds. Okay. Um, so if we want to know our total number of frames, we can calculate that. Let's get rid of this. Um, we could take this T ground and just simply multiply it by 24. That'll tell us approximately how many frames we need. I'll just, I'll just call it N for a number of frames. And let's go ahead and hit run. And so you can see we need about 100. Okay. Um, if we use less than 100, we technically won't get the moment it hits the ground, but it'll be close enough. 
Okay, so um, we want uh, 100 frames then. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and comment out some of this stuff. Um, I don't need to see this function produced every time or this function. And I don't need to see this T ground every time or this value here for N. Right, so next is what we want to do is we want to break up this interval from zero to, what was it, 4.1751. Yeah, we want to break that interval into 100 frames. So the easiest way to do that is to use uh, lin space. And let me think about what I want to call this. Um, why don't we call this uh, just maybe T? I'm going to say T equals lin space. We want to go from zero to, and I can see it over here in my workspace, 4.1751. Okay. Now, lin space automatically uses 100, uh, um, 100 elements. So we don't need to actually put comma 100 here at the end. We can just leave it like that. Next, um, we should probably think about uh, another thing, which is, you know, what kind of a dome or what kind of X values and Y values are we going to be plotting? Okay. And maybe, maybe before we do that, we'll start setting up um, our for loop that we're going to use to kind of generate this animation here. So I want to say for i equals 1 to 100, right? We said we're going to do 100 frames. And we need to make the, the, the picture of what's going on here. So we're going to need to do plot. And so we want to plot the x and the y, the corresponding x and y values. Now, the time that I want to plug in is going to come from this t vector here. So I'm going to say t of i and t of i. So again, this is just plugging in the corresponding times uh, that we're looking at so that we can find the x and y displacement. All right, so let's see here. I don't think I needed that other parenthesis yet. Um, we do need to let MATLAB know that we're just plotting a point. I'm going to just use the dot for a point there. And then we can choose what size we want this marker to be. Marker size. Um, how about we go with 10 here to start off with, and we can adjust that if we need to. Okay. Next is what we want to do is we want to set up our frames um, or collect our frames. Collect each picture that's made here, because each picture is just simply going to be a picture with the projectile, which we're going to have is just being a dot here. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's go ahead and maybe say um, f of i to collect our frames. And you just type in here, git frame. All right now, this is enough. Um, but I want to I want to show you what happens if we hit run here in a second. We need to type in one more thing though. Um, movie. We want to say that we are using F here as our frames. You want to put how many times you want to replay it. Let's just say replay it twice, and then our frames per second. We said we were going to go with twenty four frames per second. But when I do go hit run here, is what we expect to see is all the frames being generated. So it'll almost look like it's playing the video. Um, but after all the frames are generated, it will then go through and play this animation twice. But I, I want to emphasize, this is not going, going to work right. And I, wanna, I want to explain why after we hit run. So you can see that projectile is bouncing all over the place. This doesn't look parabolic in any way. Um, it, is what's happening is that it's using a different set of axes um, for each point. It's choosing the axes. So we can determine those ourselves. Um, so I can go in here and I can say axis. And in the X, uh, let's try 0 to 10. And then in the Ys, let's try uh, minus 5 to 50. 
right? Um, we can't, so if I go down to y equals minus five, that means the, the ground will be lifted up a little bit off the x-axis. And we can put the ground in our animation here in a moment as well. But let's just go ahead and give this a run and see if it looks a little better. Uh, much better, right? Much better. So here's two things I'm going to do. One is it's clearly not going all the way up to 50. So we can maybe bump the Y values down to 25. And then for the, the Y values here, it doesn't look like we even make it 10 meters. We'll just go to five here. But I, I do want to add the ground in here so we can see kind of approximately when it hits. Okay, so uh, is what we'll do next is we'll maybe say, hold on. And I'm going to make the ground function, which is going to be really simple. Um, this is going to look like just zero, okay? no matter what T we plug in. So I'm saying, hold on. And I also want to put in our plot G here. So I'm going to just say F plot G. <clears throat> um, and we should probably make sure that we're using the same domain here, which was zero to five. Okay? And when I say domain, I'm talking about X not T here at the moment. Um, so let's go ahead and try and hit get frame and see what it looks like or hit run. Uh-oh. So it looks like there's an issue again. Yeah. This is easy to fix. Let's go ahead and click out of this. So is what happened is hold on is still holding on. So it's saving every dot that we make here and leaving it there. So we need a hold off at the end of this. So that way um, we, we don't put all these frames in one picture. Let's try it run again. Okay, and it's looking a lot better. Yeah. Now, uh, we, we said that this should hypothetically take 4.1751 seconds. Um, however, MATLAB is not necessarily going to be able to keep up and actually run this at 24 frames per second. So if you actually measure the time that it looked like that was taking, it might be a little more. But as you do adjust frames per second, you will notice that um, the video will be faster or slower um, depending on how many frames per second you pick. Okay. Um, but I don't like that error message that I was getting down there. I want to see if we can maybe fix that. Um, what was causing that? almost wonder if it was our function G here. Um, I think it might have been. So one, one way around this um, would be to uh, just make a vector filled with zeros. Um, and then we could plot those points. Um, or or uh, alternatively, this might be easier. Let's do this. For some reason, it wasn't liking that zero function. We can go to plot here instead. And let's start um, with the x value 0 and with the x value of 5. And for both of those, we'll have a y value of 0. And that should connect those two points with a line. Okay. And now the error message is gone, which makes me a little happier. Right. So now we have this nice animation of some projectile. And if we wanted to slow it down again, we could make the frames per second a smaller number. And if we want to speed it up, we can make the frames per second higher. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and try to make a 3D animation here. So is what I have um, that, that you can see here is I have these three parametric equations. We're going to be in 3D. So uh, in order to do that, let's see if we can find a function that maybe will plot parametric curves for us. So you can see we have f plot 3, and we have this easy plot 3. Let's check out f plot 3. So if we look in here, yeah, it, it looks like you just put the function for x, function for y, and function for z. 
in uh, the three entries here for F plot. There are three inputs. So let's uh, maybe go back here. And we're going to use F plot three. And we have our X, Y, and Z. And for now, let's just specify the domain so we can see what this looks like. Let's go zero to 20. <laughs> All right, so this is a helix. Okay, we can move this around a little bit. Yeah, it's a helix. And so what I'm going to have us do is animate a red dot moving along this helix. So um, it doesn't matter how many frames we use here. Um, that's entirely up to us. Um, why don't we just use 100 of these again? So maybe we'll say T equals lin space. And uh, we want to go from 0 to 20. Actually, well, let's do more than let's do more than 100 since we're going from zero to 20. Let's maybe try a uh, thousand frames. I'm going to suppress that, and let's suppress our functions here too. We don't need to see these output in the command window every time, right? And to start our video again, let's just say four i equals one to a thousand. So we have a lot of frames here. Um, next, we want to actually have this plot in there um, each time. I'm going to put that in here. And yes, unfortunately, we need to plot the same thing for each frame. And by same thing, I mean we need the helix for every single frame here. Um, so we'll do hold on. And to get the point that I mentioned would be moving along the helix, um, we could do plot. Um, and then we could do x of t of i, right? So this is going to um, just be working through these times in this lin space vector here. So there's our x's, our y's. And then lastly, our z. Our z is just equal to t, so I'm just going to say t of i. Now, again, we want to be plotting a point here. And let's try the same marker size. We'll try 10 again. Marker size 10. And then remember, we want to hold off. We want to collect our frames. We need get frame. We need to end the for loop. And then we want to make the movie. And so here we want F, the number of times we want to play the video and then the number of frames per second. Why don't we just do 24 again? We have no concern how long this video takes to make. Um, when, when I say, uh, uh, or, or not make, we have no concern with how long it takes the uh, video to um, go from start to, to finish here. Because right? like the last one, we wanted it to take 4.7 uh, or 4.1 seconds, something like that. Here, we don't care how many seconds it is because, um, you know, we're, we're not working on an application problem. We're just trying to make um, the animation. So let's hit run, see if we get any error messages. It's very possible. Um, let's go ahead. Okay. So I do have an error message. So it says data must be a single input of Y values or one or more pairs of X values. Um, so it is very possible that I need something called plot three. Let me try that real quick. Yep, that was it. We just needed plot three. And so now you can see that dot just moving around the helix. And I almost wonder if I should have picked more than 24 frames per second just because of how long this is going to take. Um, I might stop it. I'm going to do that. And when you stop it, yes, it, it makes uh, MATLAB a little upset here. Let's maybe try 50 and see if this will go a little quicker. Okay. The the Right now, though, all you're watching is you are not actually watching the video itself. You're watching it um, collect all the frames that it's going to use to make the, the movie. And why don't we just wait here a second and see how it plays after we're done.
scoot this over so you can see the code if, if you're uh, looking at it. We're at 800 frames, 900 frames, and 1,000. There we go. And so now it's playing the video over at 50 frames per second. Um, it does look like it's going a smidge faster than it was as it was collecting the frames. Um, and if you wanted to slow this down, you could just lower those frames per second. All right, but that is it.